again to let yeah, people man. know, man, when you're looking at us, man, you're looking at some of the greatest they ever did it, man. Because we didn't go by the rules of New York. We didn't go by the rules of L.A. We created our own lane, our own language, our own styles. Every yep. style that come from Atlanta come from the Dungeon family. Mm, uh, yeah. we, we are the front line of our hip hop. So we're even though we came through to the 90s, we're the Rakims. Mm. We're the KRSs. Mm. We're the ones that laid the blueprint, the red print for all sides. We're the only city that has did the trifecta. We got a platinum artist on every side of this city. That's because we laid the groundwork. Look at the style that we brought. Yeah, people laughed at Gippy. Yeah, people laughed at CeeLo and Dre. I used to watch them. Mm. Look at them, what, the, what, what they wearing? What they doing? Man, man. We're breaking the rules, fool. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You can't mm. put us in a box and cr we color outside the lines every time. Mm. Mm. Yes, indeed. They say yes, you indeed. can't make a hit at this age. I say you're a lie. I think we just. Goody Mob is an elite group of MCs repping Atlanta, Georgia. The four members of the group are Big Gip, Timo, Cujo, and CeeLo. Each member of the group has their own original and distinctive style. Timo, his style is fast and frantic, but still in pocket. His rhymes are in your face, and he wastes no time. Each bar gets right to the point. Big Gip is smooth on his delivery. His pace leads you into a lyrical breakdown, almost like a lyrical author as he summarizes each point. Cujo sounds like an elder on the mic, or the angel on your shoulder giving you a better route to take, or will highlight both the good and bad of life's choices. CeeLo brings a little bit of everything. He can sing, rhyme, or go a cappella and speak to you like a sermon. His style is the truth on steroids, but delivered simply, preaching without preaching. CeeLo is an underrated as a feature artist, and he typically has the best verse on a song when he's collaborating outside of his camp. The name Goody Mob actually has meaning behind it. Goody Mob, yeah. Goody Mob means the good that most level bullshit for what he's talking about. And bull for what he's not necessarily physical death, but it's like without no hope and no faith and no belief in anything, we walk walking around spiritually and mentally dead, exactly. Right. Which gives you nothing to live for. So you can't respect your own life, you can't respect life, period. You know? Right. So what we try to do is Show, and if you if you combine the O's, it stands for God is every man of blackness, meaning that it's the yin and the yang, the good and the bad. Right, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You have to go through one to find out the other. You know, yeah. to know who you are, to know who you. Atlanta hip hop actually's been around for quite some time. The roots of early Atlanta hip hop can be traced all the way back to the early '80s with an MC named Mojo. Following up in the early 90s, you had artists like The Hard Boys, Kilo Ali, Success and Effect, and Ghetto Mafia coming out of Atlanta. Cujo has some of the earliest first-hand hip-hop experiences out of the group. Cujo was in one of his middle school classrooms when he overheard Buff, aka the human beatbox, begin a beatbox over the school intercom. Cujo couldn't believe that Buff and the Fat Boys were at his middle school. Also, Curtis Blow and Houdini also came to his middle school. The origins of Goody Mob actually starts with Cujo and Timo. They both met in high school and would ultimately become really close friends. Their friendship extended past high school. When Timo went to Morris Brown College, Cujo would visit Timo at his dorm. Timo and Cujo would eventually start to create music together. They initially wanted to call the group Goody Mob, 
but ended up changing their name to the Lumberjacks as it seemed to be a lot more marketable at the time. Cujo and Timo would perform at the Lumberjacks at talent showcases for LaFace Records in hopes to get a record deal. Timo and Cujo would meet a trio of producers collectively called Organized Noise, Rico Wade, Ray Murray, and Sleepy Brown. In the basement of Rico Wade's mom's house was a makeshift recording studio they called The Dungeon. In The Dungeon, MCs would come kick rhymes and chill. It was a safe haven for young Atlanta youth to stay off the streets and focus their energy into creativity. And the dungeon is where the dungeon family was formed. Some of the most talented artists in Atlanta all coming together to create some of the most legendary music hip hop has ever heard. Outcasts, who were just young high school teenagers, were the first group to come out the dungeon and have major success. A second group would now be formed out of the Dungeon family. Timo and Cujo went back to their old name, the Goody Mob, and now they would add two more new members, Big Gip and CeeLo. The world was going down, you know what I'm saying? My name Cujo Goody, a prisoner of war from Southwest Atlanta, right in your neighborhood, trying to spread the good. And I brought three more horsemen with me, and we're going to tell you what's going down right now in your town. Like that. What it is, yo? I'm T-Mo from the Goody Mob. I represent the bread on a plate of soul food we got cooking up for this 9-5. We about to jizz up on this November sizzot. Check it out now, you know what I'm saying? They've been trying to hold us back, but it's time for us to come on out the gate yeah. now. Y'all just get ready for this good and mob. It's all about unifying and 95 on out like that, though. Yo, and like Cadillacs and Vogue, Steel Road, Cameron and Road, this is Big Gilt representing East Point. What's up? And what's up, people, you know what I'm saying? This is CeeLo, you know what I'm saying? Straight from Southwest ATL, you know what I'm saying? Just straight revolutionary, you know what I'm saying? Indeed, and that's all. Basically, sum it up like that. We are the mighty goody Moby, you know what I'm saying? The good die most lover bull. Shh. If you take one oil with it, let you know that God is every man of blackness. Indeed. All right. Goody Mob would be at the recording sessions for Outcast breakout album, Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music. Goody Mob would make a couple of appearances on this album. In October of 1994, Outkast would release their third and final single on their debut album titled Get Up, Get Out. This would be the world's first visual introduction to members of Goody Mob. The song featured Big Gip and CeeLo. With the success of the three singles, Outkast launched a top 20 Billboard album and a platinum album. Outkast really set up the table for Goody Mob. Goody Mob was signed to the same label as Outkast, LaFace Records, which was founded by L.A. Reid and Babyface. After the group got signed, it was time to start recording their album. Outkast, we had to take our records directly to L.A. and Babyface, and to have to do that, you had to impress them. You had to bring it. You had to impress them, man, because, you know, the biggest thing they used to tell us, like, man, look, man, if the I don't, I don't want to hear a song... All I want to hear is the melody, the hook, and the chorus. Whatever mm. you're saying in between that, that's cool. I get to that. But yeah. them the three most important things. Though. So if you think about it, if you go back and listen to Organized Noise and the Dungeon Family albums, it was all about music and layers. That's why you have... Goody Mob would start to record their album at the end of 1994. It would take nearly a year to complete the album. Meanwhile, in 1995... Hip-hop is at an all-time high. Some of the best albums were released in 1995. This will be a pivotal year for not only hip-hop, but for Goody Mob to make their impression.
and we record the soul food and Curtis Mayfield house. Yeah. And I, I think that to a certain extent that made us, that made us just think about things and do things a little bit different than if we had did it in a regular studio. We was in, we was in the great Curtis Mayfield house on Camden Road, man. Like we had to do something great cause that man could come in and out that house if he wanted to and be like, yo, y'all in my house doing some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so we always wanted to make sure we did some music that, it, it, that just, just in case this man walked in the door, yeah. he could say, man, I respect that. So yeah. that's, one, that's one thing about us, man. We always felt like soul food. We always made grown man rap. For the Soul Food album, Goody Mob took a little bit of a different turn than what Outkast did on their first album. This album would be very heavy on social conscious topics. The album would also tackle political topics, police corruption. It would even seem like the group had a crystal ball because a lot of the topics and issues that were discussed on the album either already happened or is currently happening today. Goody Mob's debut album titled Soul Food will release on November 7th in 1995. The album will feature a lot of artists from the Dungeon family including Outkast, Cool Breeze, and Witch Doctor. The intro to the album is titled Free. When you listen to the song, it feels like you teleported to a Southern Baptist church as CeeLo fills the airwaves with a prayer, a wish, and a hope for the present and the future. For not only CeeLo, but for all the listeners of the album. How do you make a social conscious and spiritual album sound palatable for all listeners across the globe? That's a very tough task. Organized Noise would be able to produce the entire album Organized Noise had a grand slam on this album. They were successfully able to bring rhythm and blues, funk, soul, and then down south bounce all on this album. The lead single, Cell Therapy, released in September of 1995. The lead single on a debut hip-hop album is one of the most important songs you could ever put out for your career. Because if the lead single doesn't really take off like it's supposed to, it's going to be harder and harder to sell records and to continue to have fan support. Goody Mob didn't run into any of these problems as Cell Therapy was a smash. It cracked the top 40 Billboard Hot 100. Also, it's still to this day one of the biggest hip-hop singles of all time. The beat on Cell Therapy is so mesmerizing you can get lost in the track and not really pay attention to the lyrics. I feel grateful, man. I feel grateful that uh, the Most High gave us that. You know, for us to be able to come into the game and drop a record like Cell Therapy, yeah. and we can look around and see that this world has turned into everything that we said on that record. You know what I mean? We talking about the cameras. We talking about the government peeking in our window. We talking about the social media where they can track you and follow you anywhere you at. Now, everything that we talked about and I'm just letting people know that man you know if you got these new phones man you know them police can follow you everywhere you're going so never think that you they don't know what you're doing yeah. so you know it's just a message to y'all man that you know when a message sent sometimes it takes you a long time to get it you might not get it the first time it come across your your face but I think now people really realize what we did for the South and we hey man I don't care they were they were superstars, yeah. but I always know that Goody Ma was the backbone. That's soul food. Man. You know what I mean? You you can you, you, anytime you, and, and and you can put soul food in right now, and it's still relevant to what's going on to the day, man. Cause out here, man, it's hard, man. Like I can see that it's changed. It's more people going into poverty. It's it's less and less people knowing how they gonna eat every day. So, you know, to have soul food in your catalog, man, it sure can it surely can help you through some tough times in your life. That's one thing that I can say throughout the throughout all the years. People always came to me either coming home from jail or just going through different things with their family. They always were like, Man, I go to that soul food, man, and y'all help me through a lot. Myself more out of school than I love from this school. And I think that I mean you learn you learn what you're supposed to learn in school. But school can't teach you a lot about other things that goes on in this world that, that you need to know about. New world order. 
You know what I'm saying? Paper money. Paper money will soon be taken off the market because they want to try and find some kind of way to stop crime. They're talking about the computer chip. They're already testing credit money over in Switzerland. So, I mean, with this, there's a lot of things that y'all need to know, man, because, I mean, soon this, this, this new world order, the world as we know it, will not be the same. You know what I'm saying? We're spending capital or maybe even just purchasing different things will not be the same. So if you're not up on that system or you don't know how to work a computer, you know, sooner or later, it's, they're not going to need men or uh, one man to do anything. Computers will be able to do it all. So if you don't learn how to do something that's involved in a computer, you might be behind. You know what I'm saying? So with that, I just want to say, learn as well. Group will release their second single titled Soul Food in February of 1996. This song will really highlight the range and creativity of Goody Mob. This song would be super relatable from fans from coast to coast because we've all had soul food at some point in our lives. Dirty South really is just a depiction of the South, man, right. what's going on around us, and just different issues that's happening in these streets right now. We live in a state that we still, our state flag is the rebel flag. Right. So, I mean, we got a lot of things yeah, like, to deal with, but yet still we got a black mayor who hollers that he takes care of his, but he, right. he had not started with the first thing, that's the flag, that's the symbol, and that symbol means something that doesn't have anything to do with on that label that was saying something totally different than what that label was doing, yeah. you know? And we took it upon ourselves, and we was left out there by ourselves. You gotta look how many times our record. Uh, as soon as we dropped Cell Therapy, we was banned on MTV. As soon as we dropped Soul Food, we got another lawsuit where they said that we had took the Tabasco sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They sued us and then didn't Russell Simmons go right behind us, copy it and put it on fat form? And they didn't say nothing to him. The exact same thing. They stopped our record then. Then when we came, you know, stuff that we was kind of like, yo, I mean, why y'all bothering us? It's a whole bunch of niggas killing on records and everything else. And we <laughs> trying to say something. So just imagine trying to say something, but then going to the West Coast and they doing all the gangster stuff and they selling all the records. They ain't saying nothing. And we like, okay, now, well, what are we doing? Like, it seems like our people, they want that. And it's only a certain amount of people that want some of, you know, some of the positive stuff they need to hear about, man. Well, it's hard to, to, to check yourself when you don't know who you are in the first place, right. you know what I'm saying? Like I said earlier today, to know who you are is to know who you are not, you know? Right. And when you find out who you are, you'll find out who everybody else is. So Including the enemy. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, you know what I'm saying? Right. You have to understand that God starts from within. I, I say get God, you know what I'm saying? That's right. I'm with God that. starts from within, you know what I'm saying? But they try to make it seem, you know what I'm saying, so common by calling it your conscience. When in actuality, God is our whole existence, exactly. our whole being. You know what they saying? make it seem like he's so far away right, right here. You so know when they say talking to yourself makes you were crazy, that just means they want you to talk to God and find out where he at. You know what I'm saying? We can't even write rhymes that we'll talk to ourselves. Exactly. So actually, actually, that's God <laughs> giving us the power to manifest the message on paper. You know so what I'm saying?